correct way to annotate this one line. There are a bunch of different meanings, the homophone, it's really great, uh, etc. So this is what we were focusing on in the early days. We were focusing on quality. We were obsessed with how to get to the best annotation. And of course, back then, we didn't have any third, and then Chadwick at the very bottom contributed maybe a little sliver, maybe just made a little spelling uh, correction or, uh, or added some, uh, some uh, grammar correction or something like that. So let's zoom in on the names. You can learn a lot just by looking at the names. Now, one thing to notice here is the different colors of the different names. These colors represent the editorial hierarchy on Rap Genius. So when you first sign up, you start out as a new user, and your name is in black, like gray is over there. What this means is you can create annotations on any text, but your annotations are subject to review by editors. Editors can come in and reject or accept your annotations. And if you're a new user, getting your annotation accepted, man, that's one of the most exciting things that can happen. You get a little notification, you get an email, it's great. Getting annotation rejected can be depressing, but if the editor is good, it will often open up a conversation about the quality guidelines on Rap Genius, what it takes to create good annotations, etc. And so you can start out getting all your annotations rejected and end up learning the quality guidelines and becoming a core contributor. Now, if you do enough good annotations, eventually you get promoted to be an editor, which will turn your name orange, like Chelsea Girls. Now, as an editor, you have the responsibility and the power to edit, excuse me, to moderate incoming new user annotations, to look at a page with a bunch of contributors who are new and reject or accept their annotations. But you also have another grave responsibility and grave power, which is you can edit or delete any annotation on the entire website. So this is a lot of power, and that's why you have to choose your editors very carefully, because a bad editor could delete a bunch of annotations and cause a lot, uh, a lot of problems. So editors have a lot of power. It's tough to become an editor, but this is nothing when compared to how hard it is to become a moderator. Now, moderators' names uh, are in purple. Uh, this Meta World piece, this is actually the name of Alan, one of my co-founders. Big ups to Alan. Great guy. He's taught me a lot. And uh, moderators have all the powers editors have with one crucial addition. They have the ability to anoint new editors. So any moderator can see someone uh, in the community who, who that moderator thinks is good and make that person an editor. And so just like one editor can cause a lot of damage, one moderator can create a ton of bad editors if that moderator is bad. So you can't become a moderator unless you are very, very deep uh, in the community, unless you're a true, uh, true leader. So let's bring back the whole uh, author's uh, section and now zoom in on the numbers next to each person's name. This is another very important part of Rap Genius. This number is each person's rap IQ. This number represents that person's knowledge of rap music. And you can earn rap IQ by creating great annotations. If you earn more rap IQ, that's going to make you a good candidate to be an editor or a moderator. But you can also lose rap IQ if your annotations are bad or you're being a troll on the site. Now, getting rap IQ is actually a little complicated. This is another subtle feature we built that has nothing to do with annotation technology. So one big way to get rap IQ is for your annotations to get upvoted. So if I upvote this annotation, everyone who contributed will get points in accordance to how much they wrote. So for example, Gray at the very top, see he wrote about a third of the annotation. And so that means he'll get about a third of the points that my upvote confers. Well, how many total points does my upvote confer? Well, that is related to the amount of rap IQ I have. So if I have more rap IQ, that makes my votes worth more and gives more rap IQ to the author. So it's a pretty uh, nuanced system here, pretty complicated, uh, but it's worth it because people go nuts uh, for these points. And you know, once you have the points, it's really cool because you can show them off. This is the leaderboard for Kanye West scholarship. So everyone uh, who is competing to be the number one Kanye West scholar, this is who you have to beat. You get Kanye West IQ points by annotating Kanye West lyrics, and if you want to be the number one Kanye West scholar, give it a shot and compete uh, with, these, uh, with these scholars. So Streetlights, my man Streetlights, big up to Steven Nide, true genius, true Kanye West scholar. So it's important to give people ways to show off. One new way we just built to get people to show off, which has nothing to do with Rap IQ, is the ability to embed your annotations on another website uh, to expose your work to a new audience. So here's an example of the uh, Federal Open Market Committee statement, the latest statement from uh, Janet Yellen. And you can see this little embed button up here. If you click this and you copy the embed code and you paste this on your site, you can show off your work to your blog's readers or whatever. And so already a bunch of journalists are taking to this. Felix Salmon's pretty excited about it. Here's how this same statement looks embedded on Felix Salmon's blog. And you know, anyone can come here and, and read his works and allow him to show off. So this is how we built Rap Genius. We built this editorial and moderation hierarchy. We built this nuanced point system. We built all these ways for users to show off. And we did this to encourage quality. And it works. And it took a ton of time and a ton of effort. But it has nothing to do with the underlying annotation technology, which hasn't changed very much at all. And now, as we move into different communities and different texts, we have to build different technology to suit these communities. So one example, we had this very exciting incident earlier this year where we hosted the close reading portion of a Harvard X Divinity School 
online, multi, uh, a massive open online course uh, on the letters of Paul in the Bible. And so all these students, thousands of students, came to Rap Genius and annotated the letters of Paul uh, in Romans 1. And this created some new problems. So here is the author's list from one of the annotations uh, on Paul's letters. And this is huge. So this shares some characteristics uh, with that author's list from Mercy. Uh, but it's obviously way longer. And this new length, this new massive amount of contributors on a single annotation, this presents new problems. How do you get these contributors to work together? How do you get them to uh, contribute knowledge without shutting each other out and trampling one another and so forth? And so these are the problems we're going to be solving as well. These are community problems. They're all geared towards the same question. How do you get multiple people, multiple experts from across the world to come together and contribute knowledge effectively and create great annotations? So that is the secret to building an amazing annotation platform. Focus on annotation quality. Obsess about annotation quality. Think really hard about how to delight your community of annotators. Don't worry about the underlying annotation technology. It doesn't matter that much. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions? Uh, do you have? Oh, Bob Glushko, uh, University of California. Um, I love this stuff, but I'm wondering if there's any way to have kind of a priori reputation have a role here. If, if, I mean, if I'm a professor, I should get some points to start if I'm annotating some kind of scholarly work as opposed to starting it from scratch. Otherwise, that disincentivizes me. I have to, I have to compete with the graduate students at first, right? Yep, good question. So how do you come in with some points uh, if you are already an expert in a certain field? And so this is a really important question, and we've, uh, we've solved this in one way, um, which is not a complete solution, which is this idea of verified accounts. So this is this idea of you are an expert, or if you're really famous, you can come in and your annotations appear separate from the community annotation, and they're coming from yourself as a named uh, annotator. So, you know, for example, if uh, Janet Yellen were to come in and annotate her own uh, statement to Congress, that would be attributed to her, and it would be from her verified account, so you know it's actually from her, uh, and you know it actually like carries the weight of her, uh, uh, of her authority and her expertise. But that's not enough, you know. Verified annotations are, are important, but the community annotation is the most important thing because it's the thing that can evolve and change over time. And so it's a really good point. We should have a way uh, for people to sign up and have some built-in uh, reputation as an expert on a particular field, whether it's law or finance, uh, without having to earn all the points uh, from scratch. I really like that idea. Uh, hi. Um, Rap Genius has a, is an amazing platform. Uh, there are some issues, though, with annotations and selecting overlapping annotations. If somebody selects a body of text and somebody else wants to select a fragment of that body of text that's already been selected, they can't do that. So are you planning to change that uh, feature or, or modality? Right, so how do we deal with overlapping reference? So if I select one word in a paragraph and then someone wants to select the whole sentence that that word contains, right now we can't do it. Uh, on Rap Genius. And so, you know, this is definitely something we're trying to solve. Like, we're not ignoring sort of annotation technology, and, you know, this is something that we're definitely interested in solving. But kind of the whole point of the presentation was that issue is not actually uh, as important as one might think in comparison to the question of how do you get people to write good uh, annotations. So, you know, you could have a great annotation platform. You know, I think the, uh, the Hypothesis platform is amazing. Rap Genius is a lot to learn from Hypothesis. But still the question remains, are people going to come in and write great annotations? Are people going to produce documents uh, that have the underlying text and the annotations together that are great experiences uh, for the reader. And I think that question is the crucial thing uh, to attack because you can have an annotation system that isn't perfect where you can't do overlapping reference and it can still be great. It can still give you a ton of great information and great context about a document. But even if you have the best annotation system in the world that allows for overlapping reference and you know, allows you to anchor uh, annotations to their reference even if uh, the underlying document changes, but you have no incentive, you have no capability to encourage people to do great annotations, that annotation platform uh, will not succeed and will not give uh, people an amazing experience when they're reading the document. Well, it's something we should work on, definitely. Yep. Hi, I'm, I'm Luke Brewer. Um, over here. Uh, and have you thought about enabling sort of developing schools of thought where I might like the opinions of this group and the other person might like opinions of that group and how this might uh, interfere with the sort of global reputation system? Sure. So, you know, what about different schools of thought? You know, like, uh, I think, you know, the Bible is a really good example of this. You can have historical reading of the Bible. You can have various religious readings of the Bible from the various religious uh, traditions. How do you get all of those together on one canonical 
uh, document. So long term, and again, this is in the world of annotation technology, which is, again, what I don't think is worth focusing on, but we have, you know, I love to think about this stuff. I'm deeply interested in it. So long term, the way we're going to solve this is with something we call annotation layers. So you'll be able to go to a document, you'll be able to select the layer that you want to see, the annotation layer that you want to see. So you could select the historical perspective layer uh, on the Bible, and that might give you a very secular historical reading. You might use, like, Bible as literature, and that'll give you a secular reading as literature. You might, you know, select the evangelical layer, which is going to be a very religious layer, that the annotations are all targeting one particular religious uh, tradition. So this is in the future, and you can imagine private layers. There could be a layer for just your classroom uh, that has their own experience with the Bible. Um, and this is something we want to do, and we're going to do it, but... You know, what I'm most concerned with now is just, if you could just have one layer, what would that layer look like? And you can't get it to be perfect, absolutely, but the goal of the platform is to have each annotation, to the extent possible, encompass multiple different views. So, you know, this is something that obvious is obvious for the Bible, but it's not so obvious. It comes up in rap, too. Like, you know, there are very strongly held opinions about what lines mean and, you know, who got the better of whom in a, in a, in a, in a conflict. And so, you know, what we've been successful at is selecting editors and moderators who are really not trying to take sides to the extent possible and take you know, each perspective and integrate it to the extent that it's interesting into the annotation. So the goal right now, and it's not perfect and it can't totally be the perfect solution, is to get one annotation that encompasses all the interesting perspectives. And, you know, that's a tricky thing, uh, but when it works, it's really beautiful because you read this one annotation uh, that reads as this uniform whole, and it was actually the result of several different people, maybe several different people all hate one another, uh, writing uh, uh, comments and suggestions that all eventually got integrated into one cohesive whole. Okay, we need to move on, so thank you very much. Thank you all. Great to be here.